Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hi guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and today I'm back again with yet another video on shear forces and bending moment diagrams. Now, the method obviously that I'm going to be taking up is the method of sections. So let's go ahead with the problem and I've taken the case of a cantilever beam for which we are supposed to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. Now, as I've already told you, whenever you deal with problems based on cantilever beams, take the section from the free end and you can clearly see that the free end is at A, which is onto the left hand side. Therefore, we're going to be sectioning from the left hand side and the sign convention says that shear force downwards and bending moment anti-clockwise. I'm going to explain you how all of this works out. So let's start sectioning and let's say we are taking the section between A and C. Here we go. Now let me have a section line, something of this sort, and we're going to be considering the portion of the beam towards the left of the section. Here it is. Now the magnitude over here is obviously this is 15 kilonewtons. And let's say that we've taken the section at a distance X from the free end or from the left hand side. So the first thing to do is to use the sign convention, shear force downwards and bending moment anti-clockwise. Now, what we're going to do is we'll use the static equations of equilibrium. Summation of f of y is equal to zero. So what's the benefit in using this? Okay, now watch this carefully. We've got this Vx downwards and we've got this 15 kilonewton upwards. So downwards negative obviously and 15 kilonewtons upwards okay is equal to zero so i can essentially write this as vx is equal to 15 kilonewton that means you can say between a and c the shear force value is not dependent on x it is independent of x or you can also say that the value of shear force between a and c shall remain constant which is equal to 15 kilonewton so at A, if you try to compress this X here, you're going to have the value of X as zero. At C, you're going to have the value of X as one. At T, you'll have the value of X as 1.5. And similarly, if you go along, X is gonna increase one point. Uh, this is gonna be 2.0, 2.0. And here, finally, at the fixed end, we're going to have the value of X as 2.5. Okay, now what we're gonna do is, I'll take X is equal to zero, and I'll get the value of shear force at A, which is gonna be equal to 15 kilonewtons. If I put the value of X is equal to what? One, I'm going to get the shear force value at C. Again, let me tell you, shear force does not depend on X. Okay, but still I'm writing for X is equal to zero, shear force at A will be 15 newtons. And again, at X is equal to one, that is at C, we're going to get the shear force as 15 kN. So that's it. Now the value of shear forces have been computed. Now we're gonna go ahead and we'll try to find the bending moments at A and at C. Okay, so for that, I need to take moment about a specific point. So let's say we're taking moment about this point is equal to zero. Okay, so if you watch carefully, we've got this anti-clockwise moment already along this cross section. So anti-clockwise has to be taken as positive. What else have we got? We've got this 15 multiplied by this X producing a clockwise moment at this point. Minus, obviously 15 X is equal to zero. Well, you can write this in a better way. You can write this as mx essentially is equal to 15x. Now, again, the same drill at x is equal to zero, you'll be finding the bending moment at a and at x is equal to one, you'll be finding the bending moment at c. So put the value zero over here. So the bending moment at a turns out as zero knm. And when you put the value of x is equal to one over here, you're going to get the value of bending moment at c. Again, 15 knm, that's it positive values, both of them. So everything has been worked out between point A and C of the beam. Now let's go ahead and let's do the section between C and D. Okay, here we go. Between C and D, let me have the section line somewhere here. And let us consider the portion of the beam towards the left of this section. Okay, so this over here is 15 kN again. And this distance is X. So we have taken the section at a distance of X from the free end A. Okay, now what about this distance? This is how much? This is one meter. Okay, let me write this one meter. Anything else that we need to work with? No, everything has been worked out. Okay, as far as this portion of the beam is concerned, we have to deal with two different entities. One is this 15 kilonewton force acting at the free end. 
other one is this what do you call a couple sort of acting at sea with a magnitude of 10 knm kilo newton meter okay so the first thing is to use summation of f of y is equal to zero and if you watch carefully you have taken the section from the left so obviously shear force is going to be downwards so this is going to be vx and there is going to be a pending moment also anti-clockwise so shear force downwards negative vx um, 15 upwards and therefore positive anything else that we need to incorporate now done and dusted so the value of shear force is again 15 kilonewtons you can see so we've got to do the same drill x is equal to something what so we, we are talking about um, shear forces between c and d that is at x is equal to 1 we will be getting the shear force at c and at x is equal to 1.5 we will be getting the shear force at d so at x is equal to 1 we will have the shear force at c and at x is equal to 1.5 we will have the shear force at d and both of them both of them in fact are going to be equal to 15 kn 15 kn that's it it's that simple now let us go ahead and let us take the moment about this point okay let me extend this line yeah moment about this section so watch carefully we've got this mx anti-clockwise hence positive what else 15 multiplied by this x clockwise moment at this point so negative of 15x anything else okay so we have got to deal with this couple also anti-clockwise having a magnitude of 10 knm so since it is anti-clockwise we've got to take a positive sign 10 knm is equal to zero let me reframe this in a better way so i can essentially write this as mx is equal to 15x minus 10 you don't need to write this unit okay minus 10 okay so we're gonna do the same drill x is equal to 1 x is equal to 1.5 so for x is equal to 1, we'll find the shear force at C, all right? And for x is equal to 1.5, we'll have the shear force at D, M, D. So put the value 1 over here. So 15 into 1 is 15 minus 10 is obviously this is going to be 5 knm. And when you put the value of x is equal to 1.5 over here, so 15 into 1.5 is essentially how much? Um, let me think, 22.5, I guess. Yeah, 22.5 minus 10 is... 12.5 um, so both these values are positive k n m okay now let's go ahead and let's move further um let us discuss about having section between d and e okay let me write this over here section between d and e so let us have a section line here we go and let's have the portion of the beam towards the left of this section okay towards the left of this section here we go so that's it so we have to essentially deal with this 15 kilonewton, this 30 kilonewton, and this uh, what do you call couple also. Okay, so the first thing is shear force downwards, bending moment, anti-clockwise. Um, this section has been taken at a distance of say x from the left or from the free end A. Okay, so now let me extend this. All right, so the first thing is to use this static equation of equilibrium summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to zero vx downwards negative um, 15 positive 30 negative plus 15 minus 30 is equal to zero and we've got the value of vx is equal to um, minus 15 k n okay so again the same drill so we are working between d and e so the limits are x is equal to 1.5 and x is equal to 2. So let me just write this x is equal to 1.5. We're going to get the shear force at D. And for x is equal to what 2, we're going to get the shear force at E. Now again, if you watch carefully, shear force is independent of x. So it doesn't matter what the value of x is. It's going to remain same or it's going to remain unchanged, you can see. So we'll have the same values, minus 15 kn and minus 15 kn. Okay. So that's done and dusted. Let's move forward uh, for calculation of moments. So summation of moments is equal to zero. Let's say we're taking moment about this point. Okay, so already MX is acting anti-clockwise. 
so amx what else there is this 15 k in multiplied by this perpendicular distance producing a clockwise moment here so minus 15 k x um, then there is this uh, 30 kilo newton force and this is the perpendicular distance okay if you watch carefully from here to here the distance is x and from here to this point the distance is 1.5 so this distance over here is x minus 1.5 so for 30 kilo newton force the perpendicular distance is x minus 1.5 and since it is producing an anti-clockwise moment here therefore we'll put in a positive sign magnitude is 30 and the perpendicular distance is x minus 1.5 is there anything else that we need to incorporate yes we have to take this also into the moment equation 10 knm anti-clockwise okay therefore positive plus 10 is equal to 0 now let me frame this in a better way i can write this as mx is equal to 15x minus 30 times of x minus 1.5 minus 10 and that's it i have to put the value of x again the limits same limits between uh, 1.5 and 2 for x is equal to 1.5 we'll have the bending moment and d i don't know what it is and for x is equal to 2 meters we'll have the bending moment at this point that's e okay so when you put 1.5 over here you're going to get the value of uh, bending moment at t and it works out as 12.5 knm okay kilonewton meters and when you put x is equal to 2 we get the value of bending moment at e and it works out as 5 knm so we are almost done closing in and then finally we need to take section between e and b okay so let me just write it over here section between e and b and let me have the section line and let me have the portion of the beam towards the left of the section so that's it okay first thing use this summation of f of y is equal to zero but before that we'll have the shear force and we'll have the bending moment that's as per our sign convention and let me take this distance as x okay <sighs> fine vx downwards negative of vx these two forces okay these are downwards again they, they're going to be also taken as negative and this 15 kilo newton upwards positive so plus 15 minus 30 minus 20 um am i left with anything else in terms of concentrated loads no everything has been done is equal to zero i can essentially write this as vx is equal to minus 35 kilo newton again the same conclusion shear force between e and b is also independent of x so it doesn't matter what the value of x is so the value of x varies from 2 to 2.5 the shear force will remain unchanged and it will remain same as minus 35 kilo newton so for x is equal to 2 or for x is equal to 2.5 it absolutely does not matter okay shear force remains same ve and this is going to be what vb both of them are going to have same values negative of 35 kn and here also negative of 35 kn okay now let me take this opportunity um, to calculate the bending moment values also okay done we're going to take moment about this section is equal to zero here to be very precise and again this mx is anti-clockwise what else 15 into x clockwise minus 15 x then we've got this 30 kilo newton multiplied by this is going to be the perpendicular distance for this how much is this this is x and this much is 1.5 so this distance shall work out as x minus 1.5 so 30 multiplied by x minus 1.5 okay again anti-clockwise so positive 30 times of x minus 1.5 so what else we've got this 20 also and for that this will be the perpendicular distance so that's x between here and here that's x and this distance from here to here this is 2 so x minus 2 that's 
x minus 2. Okay, so 20 multiplied by x minus 2, positive. Um, anything else that we need to deal with? Okay, we have this couple also. Again, this is anti-clockwise, hence positive. All of this is going to be equal to 0. Now, let me rewrite this in a better way. Okay, um, mx can be written as 15x minus 30 times of x minus 1.5 minus 20 times of x minus 2 minus 10. That's it. Okay. Again, the same drill. Let, let us put in the values. For x is equal to 2, we'll have pending moment at e. Okay. And for x is equal to 2.5, we'll have bending moment at b. And both of them work out as 5 knm. And this moment at b works out as minus 12.5 knm. Now let us go ahead and highlight all the values of shear forces and bending moments that we've got till now. Okay, now let's start constructing the shear force and bending moment diagram. So here is the beam. Let me have vertical lines from all these points, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so we're gonna start from the left since section has been done from the left. Um, first of all, let me have the baseline. This is for shear force and this is for bending moment diagram. Okay, so this represents zero shear force and this represents zero bending moment. So any positive value will be above this line and any negative value will be below. And the same thing happens here also. Anyway. So let's start. We have got the value of VA plus 15 here. We've got VC plus 15 here. VC 15 again, VD is plus 15 here. Then this VD is minus 15. Okay, here. Then VE is minus 15. VE is somewhere here. Okay, negative value. And then finally, VE is minus 35. Okay, so yeah. And then VB minus 35 here. And when you join all of them, this is what you're going to get. Okay. So that's it. So that's um, the shear force plot. All right. Now let us go ahead and make the bending moment plot. Starting with point A, zero bending moment here. And then we've got this M uh, bending moment at C, 15 km here. And then we again got bending moment at C, 5 km. What is it that there are two values of bending moments? Because at point C, we have a couple and therefore we're going to have two values of bending moments. Okay. And if you watch carefully, 15 minus five works out as 10 KNM and that's the value of couple, uh, which was already applied at point C. So that was all about why we had two values at point C. Anyway, um, let's move ahead with moment at D now here, 12.5 moment at E five here. And then moment at E again, it's five. Then moment at B is minus 12.5 somewhere here. Let's join them. All of them, in fact, with the help of a line. There you go. That's it. And there you go. And let me finish this. Okay. Now guys, if you watch carefully here, the value of bending moment was negative and here the value of bending moment was positive. At this point, you can say the value of bending moment changes its sign. So this essentially is what you refer to as POC or the point of contraflexure. And let's say if we were to determine the distance of this point, okay, let's say from the left hand support, we can do so. This is very easy. Let's say the point of contraflexure lies at a distance of X. Okay. So where, where has this point of contraflexure appeared? It has appeared between E and B. Okay. So between E and B, there is a point where the bending moment is zero between E and B. Between E and B, there is a point where the bending moment is zero. So we have this bending moment equation. And what essentially needs to be done is, you need to equate this bending moment equation, okay? Equate it to zero, and then you have to solve for X. And when you solve for X, you're going to get the value of X is equal to 2.14 meters. That's it. Okay, so at a distance of 2.14 meters from end A, that is from the extreme left portion of the beam, the bending moment changes sign, or you can say that the bending moment is zero. So guys, that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query, write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has enhanced your knowledge of engineering mechanics, 
then do share and like this video subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you get a notification well i'm going to be back with more such videos and i'm planning to make videos on moment of inertia and centroids after this lecture series on shear forces and bending moments until then it's a wrap this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day and keep learning